Did you know that 95% of people are unhappy with their lives because they're too selfish? Find out how you can break free from this trap and live a fulfilling life of love and sacrifice in this episode. God's resistance. Fight, bam, bam, for your rights, bam, bam, or show some grace. You know, the Beastie Boys wrote a song about fighting for their rights to party against the protests of their teachers and their parents. And they obviously put a premium on absolute freedom and personal rights. But what if you had to choose between your rights and your duty to love? So in this episode, you'll discover the shocking truth about what happens when you ignore the higher call of love and only care about yourself. You'll also learn how to acknowledge your rights, but not at the expense of others. And you'll find out how to show grace and love to those who differ with you, even when doing so may hinder your supposed rights. So here we go. We have been in Romans chapter 14. We did the first half last time. This time we're doing the second half. So it's verse 13 and onward to answer these particular questions. Verse 13, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So if we were to back up to the verse before this, it talks about how Jesus, he is going to have uh, be on the throne and everyone's going to bow at his feet and acknowledge that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is the judge of all. And because Jesus is the judge, verse 13, therefore judge one, don't judge anybody anymore, right? And so that's the thing, because Jesus is the judge, you and I aren't the judge. He's on the throne. We're not on the throne. So we're told here to not judge anyone else anymore. But what should we judge? He says, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So what he's saying is instead of judging everyone else, judge yourself, judge your own actions. Is what you're doing taking your rights and I've got my rights, I'm a Christian, I've got my liberty in Christ, and is taking those rights causing your brother or your sister to stumble? Is it emboldening them to sin against their conscience? That is where we need to judge by. So don't judge everyone else, judge yourself. That's essentially what he's saying. He said, I know in verse 14 and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there's nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So even Paul acknowledges what seems to be their question and what some of them came to the conclusion, the conclusion is some people thought that certain types of food were clean and unclean. And he said in the gospel, he realized those were shadows and types in the Old Testament, but he realized nothing is unclean in and of itself. So that's the absolute truth, right? Nothing's unclean in and of itself. God's made all things. But he said, if somebody thinks it's unclean, he said, to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Why? We're going to get to this a little bit later as he points it out. But ultimately, if your conscience is troubled by something, he's saying you need to obey your conscience. If you feel it's unclean, that it's unclean to you, and going against that, you yourself would be sinning, though in the most absolute sense, it's not a sin. So we need to pay attention to our conscience and not just run roughshod over the top of it. But he says in verse 15, if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. So here we find it. Some person thinks that you can only eat vegetables. The other person thinks you can eat meat. Now, this is the issue that is being dealt with right here. But I want to tell you, there are these same type of issues that we deal with in this present day. And so we don't just need to relegate it to vegetables and meat and who eats what. This can go to any differing opinions throughout Christianity that aren't absolutes where we need to look at things and say, are my rights that important? Is my rights going to rob someone else of my love? Because I need to look at things differently. And this is how it comes out. He says, if thy brother be grieved with thy meat. So you're the person that thinks it's okay to eat meat. I know God made all meat. There's nothing wrong with meats in the most absolute sense. It, it's not to an idol. It's not to anyone else. It's not unclean. God made this meat. So you feel at perfect liberty to do so. That's your right under God. That is your liberty. You know that. That's the absolute way for it to be. But if your brother be grieved with your meat, now you're not walking in love. Now walkest thou not charitably. In other words, if eating meat appears to be a sin to your brother, 
and you're doing this in front of him, what you're doing is you're not walking in love anymore. You're flaunting around your rights and saying, if you don't like it, lump it. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people that act that way in Christian circles at this in, in this present day. They're more concerned about their rights and you not infringing their liberty than they are about love. Love is much higher than rules, regulation, and rights. Love sees the better way. We've, we're told that in 1 Corinthians. Love is the more excellent way, right? But oftentimes people are hanging on to their rights. He says, if you hang on to your rights like that, when the other person feels it's a sin, you're not walking in love anymore. And then he gives this kind of command, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. In other words, Jesus died for that weak brother. Jesus died for that person that thinks it's a sin to eat meats and only eats vegetables. And now you're going to go ahead and flaunt your rights in front of that person. And you're going to destroy them and their conscience. You're going to destroy what God is trying to do in them. God will help them come around. They'll probably see those things. But if they never do, he said, you need to walk in love. You, you, you can know that something is right or wrong in the most absolute sense, but in love act a certain way. And we get into that even here. He says, let not then your good be evil spoken of. I like that too. Uh, backing up in that verse 15, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Jesus redeems people from all different walks of life, from all different baggages people have from wherever they've come from. This baggage clings to them. And sometimes it doesn't just fall off like this. When we come to Christ, there's a lot of things that you and I have to work through when we come to Jesus, because walking in the light is so foreign to the darkness we used to walk in. And so some people are further along in their journey and they see already, oh, that's not a big deal. Some people, they just come in and they're trying to sort all this out. They're working out their salvation with fear and trembling, but Jesus died for them. And he says, let not then your good be evil spoken of. So what does that mean? Well, the good thing is Jesus freed us from those clean, unclean kind of things of the Old Testament. Those were types and things to help us to bring uh, schoolmasters to bring us to Jesus Christ. There was reasons and purposes for those. And there may even still be reasons right now as far as health is concerned. I don't want to eat bats, right? And that was a prohibition inside of the Old Testament. But it seems to be that in eating bats is not really a prohibition anymore, though I still wouldn't do it. The things are ugly and they probably have diseases in them. And I just really don't want to deal with that. But there but there was clean and unclean animals for a purpose. And oftentimes it was a separation from the nations around them that had very strange practices. But he's saying right now, don't let your good be evil spoken of, even though you have that knowledge, that liberty that God has set you free from all of the those things of the law, the ceremonial aspects of the law and all, and he set you free so that you see what the re, real reality and truth is. He said, don't let then that good, that knowledge you have, now be evil spoken of because with that knowledge, you decided to walk unlovingly towards your weak brother or sister. Why? Verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You see, a lot of times what goes on is the religions of the world get caught up in these useless things. They get caught up in meat and drink, right? But that's not the kingdom of God. It's not about what you eat and don't eat. He said the kingdom of God is so much higher and bigger than that. It is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Those things liberate somebody. That liberates your heart. That liberates your conscience, right? That liberates you to love people with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength and not be so focused on all these different ceremonial rules and washings and dietary restrictions and all that. He wants us simply to love people. It is peace righteousness, joy in the Holy Ghost. And so if any of our actions are threatening those things, like me claiming my rights and saying, if you don't like it, lump it, but that's threatening righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost in my own heart. And in the community of believers, he's saying, you've missed the kingdom, guys. The kingdom's not about this. I'm, I'm addressing these things, Paul would say. I'm addressing it because you've asked a question, but this is not what Christianity is about. It's so much higher, so much more than these petty things that people are getting hung up on. And it's still the same today. We get stuck in so many petty arguments about things that, that don't matter. And like Jesus said, we are straining at gnats and swallowing camels and we're leaving love out of the picture, right? And love is just this ushy gushy thing. I'm talking about the self-sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. God have mercy on us and help us. We need this all the yet more. 
When the world looks on the church, they're seeing more divisions within the church than they are anything else. And there has to be divisions, according to Paul, because some people are wrong and some people are right. But there's oftentimes divisions that have nothing to do with absolutes and it's over the most ridiculous things. May God help us to see that so that we can bring healing to those wounds inside the church and the church could then be the hospital for souls that people come in and say, God's in you in and of a truth rather than saying, these people have more problems than we do. We're out of here. We don't want that. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Verse 18, for he that in these things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, serveth Christ, is acceptable to God and approved of men. That's what God accepts. Are you serving God in righteousness, in peace, in joy in the Holy Ghost? He says God accepts that person. And not only God, but men accept that person. Because we can have very strict dietary laws and all the do's and don'ts of certain things in that shell of religion, denying the power thereof. And the world around knows that we don't have any power. We have no love. There's nothing that attracts the person when they just look at your rigid life. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a disciplined life at all, but I'm simply saying if that's all you've got, you've missed the whole point. But people are attracted to a Christ likeness of spirit, right? And oftentimes that Christ like of Christ likeness of spirit that will help us to live in certain ways. We will, in fact, be more disciplined in our lives, but it won't be a rigid discipline. It'll be because of the love that we have for Jesus Christ that these things are different inside of us. And he says, God will accept you and men will approve of you. So let us, therefore, in verse 19, follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Rather than focusing on what divides us, and God help me, I'm talking to you right now, and I'm thinking, oh Lord, help me with certain things that I've focused on. I don't want to unnecessarily make division. You shouldn't either, right? God help us all not to just look for the things that make for division, but where can I find something that makes for peace? Because the body of Christ is said to be one. We're unified under one head for one purpose, one kingdom, one calling, one Lord, one baptism, as the scripture says, right? And if that is the case, let me look for ways to make peace between my brothers and sisters and things where I can build one another up, edify. That's what it means. Building one another up in Christ so that they're stronger in Christ than they were before we had a conversation, before we met. That can only be happening as we surrender ourselves to the truth and to the Holy Spirit, which makes the truth a reality in our lives. Verse 20, for meat, destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. So we don't want to eat with offense. And he said, don't destroy the work of God because of meat. All things are pure in the most absolute sense. Yes, that is true. That is right. Acknowledge the rights, but then say, love may call me to go higher. Love may call me to push my rights aside for the sake of love. For the sake of unity, for the sake of God's grace, I'm going to suspend my rights here because the love is the higher calling. That's what he says. And then he says in verse 21, it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Does that mean every time somebody says, I'm offended at what you are doing right now? Does that mean that we have to just on every little offense change our course? No, he's saying if somebody stumbles and is offended because of truly like it's going to ruin their soul. You know, it's going to cause them to be on shaky ground spiritually and cause them to sin against their conscience. Then we've got to pay attention to this. Don't allow my brother to stumble over silly things. Remove those things out of the way and help this one, right? Rather than make him confused and offended and weak. He says, do you have faith in verse 22? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. So other, in other words, know what your rights are. Know what's absolute in God's sight on these certain things. You can have a freedom inside your heart saying, Lord, I know this stuff doesn't mean anything whatsoever, but for love's sake, I am going to suspend my rights because love for my brother, for my sister here is way more important than what I think the absolute truth is on this particular issue, right? I want to love them, right? It's not meaning we're throwing absolute truth out the window, but I'm just saying when my conscience doesn't condemn me about it, I can just have joy in my heart to God. But I'm going to say, you know what? Forget that. I, for love's sake, I'm not going to do this in front of my brother. So even while the world stands, I won't do that. But here's the here's a principle that we need to realize too. Verse 23, he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And this is the thing. Sin is when you do something that you think is wrong. 
you do something you think is wrong, you do it anyways, you've sinned. That's the, that's the heart behind it. This also goes to show how God looks at the motives of the heart. So where are you, dear listener? Are you somebody that then is going about trying to say, here's my rights. You've got to listen to me. These are my rights and this is what's going to happen. Or are you looking for ways to love others even when they're weak? Because that's what Jesus would have you do. Have the self-sacrificial love of Jesus. Make sure to subscribe, like, follow, turn on the notification bell so that you can be aware of all the content that comes out. Follow us on all our social media and visit godsresistance.com. We are thankful for you.